Welcome to the Internet Empowerment Series of Video Tutorials, hosted by author Deltina Hay and sponsored by Plum Web Solutions and Drury University's Social Media Certificate Program. I'm Deltina Hay, and these tutorials are based on my book, The Social Media Survival Guide, already in its second edition. Visit my blog at socialmediapower.com for more social media tips and learn more about my book and my availability for speaking engagements at deltina.com. Neither Deltina Hay nor her sponsors are affiliated with any of the services or tools highlighted in this series. In this session we discuss WordPress plugins. Now the first thing I want to note is that plugins only apply to self-hosted WordPress sites. So if your blog is hosted at WordPress.com, you're not going to have access to plugins. And you can find your plugin menu down on the left hand sidebar here. Now if we click on Plugins, we'll get a, a screen that lets us see the plugins that we already have installed on our site. You can go to the settings for particular plugins. You can delete them or deactivate them. Now, plugins are add-ons that enhance your WordPress blog or website. They can be as simple as a button allowing visitors to share your site or as sophisticated as entire shopping carts. It's recommended that you only install plugins that fill a specific need, however. There are a lot of nifty plugins out there, but it's best to resist the urge to implement plugins just because you can. Always keep your readers in mind. Now in this session, we explore searching, choosing, and installing plugins using a simple example. In upcoming sessions, I'll discuss installing and setting up specific plugins. Now, to add a new plugin, we can click on Add New here, or we can go down to our menu. Now on this page we can search for specific plugins in the WordPress plugin directory. So we could enter a search term here or we could click on one of the more popular tags down here to find our plugin. Now what I want to do is find a plugin that will stream my Twitter timeline onto my WordPress sidebar. So what I'm going to do is click on the Twitter tag here and this is going to return search results for plugins that use Twitter as a tag. Now as I scroll down I'm going to be looking at the descriptions to find the plugin that might actually do what, what I'm searching for. And in this case the WP Twitter timeline plugin seems to do what I want it to do, just adds a Twitter timeline as a sidebar widget to my WordPress blog, which is what I'm looking for. Now notice it does have a rating of 5, but I want to know a little bit more about this plugin. Not all plugins are created equal, so you want to do a little bit of research before installing them. Oftentimes you'll find a number of different plugins that do the same thing, so the way to eliminate some of them is to look at the details for a particular plugin and not only go by the ratings. One of the first things you want to note is that it's compatible up to the most current version of WordPress. And this one is. It's also been downloaded a fair number of times. That usually means that a plugin is pretty popular. It has a good rating. It also has a home page, a plugin home page that we can go to. And that's always a good thing and that means that, that the author is probably supporting the plugin. And then you're going to get a longer description. You can click on installing or installation instructions. Now typically if it's in the WordPress directory it's just a matter of clicking the install now button. But there may be other things for some of the more sophisticated um, plugins. <clears throat> and then screenshots is going to show you usually the setup screen. And that's what this one does. It shows us kind of how we set up the, the plugin. And then it shows a screenshot of what what the plugin looks in action. And so all of those things together are going to give us a good idea of, first of all whether or not this plugin fills our needs but also whether or not it might be a good choice. And in this case I believe it is. So all we would do then is click the install now button. And this is all pretty much automatic. It's going to unpack the pat the plugin package, install the plugin, and then you can either from this menu click on activate plugin 
or just return to the plugin installer. I'm going to go ahead and click on Activate Plugin. Okay, so back on the previous screen, we see that the plugin's been activated. And we can scroll down to the bottom here and see that it has been activated, and we can deactivate it if we want. But one of the things that I wanted to point out here is that different plugins have different types of settings. Um, some plugins, you're going to find the settings over here on your left main menu area of, of WordPress. You can click on settings, and you notice right here WordPress.com stats, Slicker, Flickr, RPX, Google Analytics, some of the other plugins I have installed for this blog. Their settings menus are going to show up under the settings area. Some of them also will show up under tools, for instance, the domain mapping plugin that I have installed for this site. So oftentimes you might need to poke around to find where the settings are for a particular plugin in order to get it to work. Except that sometimes, and especially in our case, the plugins are meant to be to work as sidebar widgets. And so what that means is that you're only going to see the settings for that widget under the widgets area. So if you go to appearance and click on widgets, then what we'll find by just looking around here is we'll find our WP Twitter timeline. Now you don't always have to poke around like this. If you read the instructions for the plugin in the details area, it will tell you, you know, where to find the settings for a particular plugin. But those are the three main areas that you want to look. Look under settings, look under tools, or go directly to widgets. So the way we would install a widget like this, or a plugin like this that is a widget, is that we would grab a hold of the widget that the plugin created for us, pull it into our primary or any of our widget areas, and then we'll want to um, fill out some of the options or settings for the plugin. In this case, our options are title. We want to place our Twitter name in here. That's going to be the Twitter handle that we're going to um, pull our timeline from. The number of tweets that you want to show in the widget. And then these are some other options that you might want to explore. And you could also control the text color and the link color. And then it looks like with this particular plugin, we have an option to place some custom CSS in there. But to just get the the plugin or widget up and running, I think that those are probably the the only options we absolutely have to place in there. So I'm going to click Save so that we can go over and take a look at the site to see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the, the bare bones version of the plugin that we just installed. We could certainly give it a background color and decide to use um, show avatars, that sort of thing. That, that went along with the additional settings. So what you, you would want to do is go in here and you know fool around with the settings to get it to, to look the way you want it to. The main thing is I just wanted to kind of demonstrate for you how you would go about installing a plugin and finding where the settings are and then fooling around with the settings to to make the plugin or the widget kind of your own or to go along with your own site. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to point out before we end this session and that is that if we go back to plugins add new the thing I want to point out is that not all plugins are in the WordPress directory in order to install them in an automatic way the way that I showed you before the plugin needs to be in the WordPress directory 
but oftentimes you might purchase a plugin from someone else or from another site that you download it and then upload it to your computer. Now, if that's the case, then you want to go up here to the Upload button. Now, what you would do here is you would keep the plugin when you download it from another site. You keep it on your computer in a zipped format, and then you would upload the zip file by clicking Browse, choosing it from your computer, and uploading it, and then click Install Now. Now, it'll go through the same process when it installs it. It's just that you're going to upload the file yourself as opposed to choosing it from the WordPress directory. Now, I do have a caveat here. You want to be really careful the plugins that you install on your site because oftentimes they can contain uh, malware, but they can also have security risks and issues. Typically, the ones that are contained within the WordPress directory have gone through a little bit of of scrutiny before being allowed in the directory. So those are those are typically a lot safer. But now I'm not saying that external plugins are not safe. I'm just saying that, that be really careful as to the source that you're using it from. Just make certain that the that the source is trusted that you're that you're downloading a plugin from. And that concludes this session on WordPress plugins. In upcoming sessions, I'll demonstrate how to implement more sophisticated plugins. Thank you for listening. If you are interested in enhancing your resume with a social media certificate from an accredited university, then visit socialmediacertificate.net for information on the online courses I teach for Drury University. Please also visit our sponsor, Plum Web Solutions. That's Plum with a B, WebSolutions.com.